I just want you to imagine this morning what this meeting was like between Jesus and the leper. Leprosy in the Bible is not the same as the way we define it today. Hansen's disease, made famous by Damien of Molokai. The biblical word for leprosy referred to a whole group of infectious skin diseases. The book of Leviticus records a whole group of rules regarding the quarantining of someone who was described as having leprosy, as well as if healing was ascertained, then the reincorporation of the person with this disease back into the community. But they were considered to have a type of leprosy or disease called Zarat. So a person who had Zarat was ritually unclean, and they were barred from the community and temple worship. And anyone who came in contact with the person who had Zarat was ritually unclean. And of course, they could be possibly infected by the disease. So this man was Zarat. He approaches Jesus. And he's violating the quarantine, first of all, and probably is liable to some public sanction. So Jesus takes an even greater risk when he not only engages the man in conversation, but he reaches out and he touches him. The man afflicted with Zarat, he suffers in a double way. First of all, he's got this discomfort of the disease. And then secondly, even more, he suffers because he's been excluded from the community and he has no contact with anyone. He's literally untouchable. And so Jesus' gesture of reaching out and touching him is more than a means of bringing about a physical cure. The touching is an act of compassion, healing the human disconnect that has accompanied this human ailment. And notice, too, while Jesus is touching the person, which is a technical breach of the law, he's careful to remind the man of what he has to do once he's cleansed, of going back to the temple and having the high priest approve of his healing. Now, I love this story, and it's so simple in some ways, because it gives new meaning to the phrase, reach out and touch someone. And it works in two ways. When, for some reason, you may feel yourself in a state where you feel untouchable. This powerful story is a reminder that no matter what, you can go to Jesus and you can be restored to know and to feel that you belong in God's home and in God's embrace. Now, the more important thing is on the other side. It reminds us that when acting in the spirit of Jesus, that we can connect with people who feel as though their world separates them, isolates them, and makes them untouchable. And that our touch can do so much to making them and bringing them back in to the group, to the community, to the place where they've been excluded. It's amazing when I go into the hospital and I walk into a room where someone is dying, how death often isolates the family members from the one who's dying or is about to die. And there's, there's such a sterility in the room and such a fear of what's coming. And I find the first thing that I have to do is reach out and touch every member of that family and let them know that Jesus is here. And then bringing the family to actually, at some point, touch the body of the one who's dying so that there's a connection, that they realize that death is something that doesn't mean it's untouchable, that they can actually be affected and healed by this experience of sending the one they love to God and joining them together in a place that 
often separates them and frightens them. You can reach out and touch someone even with a phone call. <laughs>